Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out this headline. Things are getting real. Don't believe it. It's still true. China versus the USA. Ripple XRP equals secret weapon. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter for exclusive content right now. $1.06 trillion market cap for cryptocurrency. We're off by 2.6% now. Right here, we see Bitcoin 22,500 plus. We see Ethereum 1500 plus. Tether market cap 66.9 billion and growing, they say. XRP 40 cents, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at this. It's uphold, home of the alts. Why uphold is different? Let me give you one reason. Anything to anything, baby, they've done that. And it's amazing. So make sure you check it out. Even if you're already a customer of uphold, click my link underneath the video and check out the staking up to 30 assets, including HBAR, by the way. And speaking of anything to anything, you can use your crypto if you're accredited to buy private equity on link to. This is remarkable. This is a real look at where the world is truly going, ladies and gentlemen. PolySign, Ripple is back on the board. Upholds there itself. Link to and so many others. Unstoppable domains. Don't mess around. Click the links underneath the video. We start right here as a major report from Michael Branch. Give him a follow. A major crypto tracking platform whale alert over the past three days says anonymous whales have transferred a staggering amount of XRP that exceeded 600 million coins. Whoa! Where's all that going? That's a lot of chicken. And I wanted to touch this again because I touched it over the weekend. And this is a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. This is really about Signature Bank that made the announcement that said no longer can they use SWIFT unless you're sending more than $100,000 to buy crypto if you're a Signature Bank customer. Remember that little thing? And everybody was like, oh, SWIFT cutting out retail? We weren't sure? Well, we have to pay very close attention to see if that actually starts growing a bit. But what we do know is, is that Signature Bank that made that announcement we also know that Silvergate Bank, owned by Barry Silver and DCG, right? All hung up in the middle of the throes of the FTX collapse. Both of these banks received up to $13.6 billion from the federal home loan banks. You have to ask yourself, was this the first example of too big to fail when it comes to crypto? That is the question. Elizabeth Warren is up in this too somewhere with her thoughts. And we covered that, I think it was a couple days ago. But let me tell you, I happen to think because both of these banks are highly involved in crypto activities, we may have just witnessed a hidden bailout. We'll keep an eye on it. Look, I'm showing you this. And the next several pieces of information you see, I believe, are not mutually exclusive. That is my personal opinion. And you guys know that Saudi Arabia's central bank is carrying out experiments with other central bank digital currencies in cooperation with other financial institutions. They have made it very clear, as recently as the World Economic Forum in Davos, they are open to settling trade for oil in currencies other than the U.S. dollar. That's what we're watching unfold. I remind you about the relationship of Saudi Arabia's central bank and SAMA, the uh, monetary authority, is ramping up its research on central bank digital currencies. And then I also remind you uh, that not only are they doing that, but that Ripple and Saudi Arabian SAMA, monetary authority, and central bank are partnered. The Central Bank of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has signed an agreement with Ripple to help banks in the KSA improve their payment infrastructure at the time using X current because this was back in 2018. This was years ago. This relationship is really solidified as I see it. Then I remind you, look, this is what's happening around the world, okay? While everybody's thinking we're never going to get clarity for crypto, this is what I see happening here. 
I'm stacking my penny next to their dollars. Who are they? Everyone I'm showing you. And as long as I see them creating, adopting, piloting, implementing, I am bullish. I'm a permable in the crypto space. Now, everybody's going to make their own decision what they feel the best place to put your investment, if you choose to do so, is going to be. You guys, I think, certainly know where mine is, not financial advice. James Wallace to represent Ripple at the Digital Pound webinar. We know Susan Friedman was just speaking in November of 22 to the UK Treasury Committee. This is getting exciting. The UK has said that they could see a British stablecoin pound pound stablecoin in the coming weeks. Brazil, huge relationship ties from Brazil to, to Ripple as well, gets crypto laws. Industry players will get 180 days to comply. Let's go to Europe, the EU. MICA at the door, how European crypto firms are getting ready for sweeping legislation. It's on the verge of taking place. A lot of these areas we're talking about encompass G7 and G20 nations. This is getting very, very real, ladies and gentlemen, to me, at least at my house. And then we covered this. Shout out to Eleanor Terra for bringing this back around here. Just from a few days ago, China-backed blockchain project proposed SWIFT alternative for stable coins and central bank digital currencies. This is UDPN, Universal Digital Payment Network, tied in with the United Nations. This has really been created by Red Date Technology, which is also blockchain services uh, 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 network, blockchain-based services network. So this is all China state-backed is what we're looking at here. So when you look at this, I have to say to myself, what are we talking about here? I have said on this channel multiple times, he who has the goal makes the rules. But then I have added, he who controls the payment rails of the future runs the world. This, I believe, is a perfect graph of exactly what the world is not looking to do. But we're up against the wall here. The rest of the free world, I'm pretty sure, doesn't want to be running on CCP-controlled payment rails. That would be a problem. The gentleman from Red Date Technology goes on in this article to talk about how you don't need a token to experience the benefits of a public blockchain. Really sounding a lot like the argument that we've heard David Schwartz make of no incentive is the best incentive. And that means to not reward miners or things of that nature in a proof of stake system or proof of work system. That's why there is none of that in what we see with XRP, right? And the Federated Byzantine Agreement and so forth, consensus mechanism. You don't see the incentivized situation set up. However, it is an advantage to have pre-allocated and gifted XRP to that network because then you can actually have a very real new commodity or money, however you choose to see it, created with real value by the liquidity and utility that moves on and through and across that network. Don't believe that. It's still true. Now, listen, this is something I've thought for a very long time. I'm going to play you right now the clip from the movie Krypton Airs. And if you haven't seen it, go to CryptoPerformance.io, give your email and watch it for free. It is more relevant today than it ever has been. I, ma I made that movie with Dustin Planholt knowing that this moment we're in was what the movie was about. Look at the question that I asked at Ripple Swell 2019 of Dr. Rajan, formerly IMF governor. I want to ask a question about globalization. If you could talk about the idea of the old concept of the bank or coin and a neutral asset being in place of a global reserve status of the dollar and possibly that being XRP. You know, uh, what you're asking for is whether there's a possibility of a global currency. And to some extent, that's what Libra was trying to do. And as I understand it, that's different from what 
exactly is trying to do. And, and, and the reason it is, is as follows. As soon as you go to maintaining the value, right, some kind of stable coin, uh, a whole set of regulatory concerns get triggered. I have to make sure that there is corresponding uh, financial or real assets backing this, this notion of value that, is, that they seek to maintain. Now, after I asked that question, there was a huge ovation that erupted from the 800 attendees in that conference room. And moments after that, David Schwartz had got up and walked out. And I had been spending a lot of time talking with him. And shout out to David Schwartz. I walked out of that room into the reception area. And I just felt like, you know, everyone was asking this question and dancing around it, but not really asking it. And I went out and I followed David out. I said, well, David, you know, did I, did I mess up? I mean, I just, you know, I hear everybody dancing around it. Am I wrong to ask the question? And David just candidly looked at me. And obviously David would never say anything that he wouldn't say on public television to all of us. And he just simply said very candidly to me, well, what choice do they have? What choice does the world have really? And I'm paraphrasing, right? What choice does the world really have? To use the Chinese yuan because the dollar's really getting so beat up and, and stressed? Or to use an asset, an XRP ledger made by an American company, which one are you going to trust more, essentially, is the point he was making. And it's a point that we've talked openly with many other people on this show. And I think today it is more relevant to think of it and everything that is happening geopolitically right now in this moment than it ever has before this day. You know, I don't pretend to know where these things are going, but I have said it a million times. XRP was not designed to really introduce into a system that was healthy. XRP is designed to complement the system and to help relieve the stress of the current fiat system and certainly a fiat dollar national currency that serves also as a global reserve currency, as does the U.S. dollar. It does not threaten one dollar from any country or government around the world. In fact, the way I see it from where I'm sitting is, is it gives a confidence and security to every country that from here for your dollar can never be threatened again unless it's done from with your, within your own borders. Now, how about that? And maybe that brings a very bright future. Not financial advice for me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.